among all the craziness of the Soviet society's engineering. This one breaks all the records. A Russian colossus of the skies of 70 tons and 800 square meters wing area. Product of the imagination of the ingenious of the legendary Tupolev Bureau. Even bigger in some points than the Anton of 225, it perfectly incarnates the greatness of the rising Soviet Empire. This titan's name is Tupolev NT-26. of the industrialization policy, Soviet aeronautics experienced a real boom bust in terms of production capacities and technological innovations. Among the many newly created aircraft manufacturers is the iconic Tupolev, which already distinguished itself by the creation of impressive planes such as the ANT-4, the TB-3, or the NT-20 Maxim Gorky. But none of these come close to the dimensions of the next project, the NT-26. The history of our giant begins in September 1929, when the Scientific and Technical Committee of the Air Force asked to the TSAGI to study about the creation of all metal planes capable of carrying a pen of 10 and 25 tons. Motivated by the idea of receiving the results of TSAGI's research on the conception of special planes, Tupolev decided to respond to this ambitious request. The outcome of TSAGI's studies for the 10 tons plane led the foundation for the NT-16, and the 25 tons one will be its ulterior development leading so to the NT-26. Its first catches were made in 1930. This showed that the plane had three vertical stabilizers and was to be powered by the 12M-34 engines whose head would be located on the leading edge of the wings and four configurated in two tandems of pushing pulling above the wings generating so a power of 9840 HP propelling the plane at only 223 km per hour. In 1931, the plane officially appeared in the programs of the Soviet aeronautical industry under the designation of TB-6 which stands for the military version of the plane NT-26, but also for the NT-28, which is its cargo and passenger version capable of carrying 250 passengers. The cargo plane's main purpose was to allow to the Red Army to transport a whole company, including vehicles or field artillery. In October of the same year, the project convinced so much that the equivalent of the time of the UAC decided to accelerate the program in order to achieve it at the end of 1932. However, TSAGI could not meet such deadlines due to the many other wars in which the institute was already implicated. So, the work started only in March 1932 at a normal cadence. The construction of a such plane being already a significant engineering challenge, it represents also a logistical challenge. Indeed, constructing and repairing a such plane requires infrastructures of the same proportion. As a result, two factories were built, the number 84 at Moscow and the number 124 at Kazan. The main specification of the aircraft have been determined in February 1933. 
According to this, the plane had to have a maximum speed of 250 km per hour at an altitude of 5,000 meters, whose the maximum would be 7,000 meters, and a range of 1,500 km. Like previously said, its maximum calculated speed was only 228 km per hour. So, Tupolev's engineers decided to use the promising M34 FRN engines, having a power of 1200 HP, allowing to the plane to pass the required speed of 250 km per hour by 25 km per hour and to extend the range of the aircraft to 3,300 km. As gigantic as slow, it would be a target of choice. It had so to be defended by an armament as intimidating as the dimensions of the aircraft for any pilot who would try to engage it. It consisted of four SHKS of 7.62 mm, one DA machine gun, three SHVAK of 12.7 mm, three cannons of 20 mm, and even a 37 mm caliber. To add even more craziness to this project, the military proposed to hang to it heavy equipment such as artillery and tanks. In the year 1935, a two-seater towing model glider of one-fourth scale had been constructed in order to clarify the main aerodynamics features of the project. It was piloted by the famous test pilot Boris Nikolaevich Kudrin. Finally, the work focused on the development of the military version to the detriment of the civilian one in order to finish the project in December 1935. Nervousness, if the imagination of the conceptual seems to know no end, it is the same for the project since as and when the past pond engendered by the will of TSAGI to obtain the required materials for the production of the bomb. But mostly as a result of the slowing of the project in favor of the larger and faster plants which were now interesting the military more mostly due to the rapid development of the anti-aircraft defense systems. The project has been suspended since July 1934 to be then abandoned when the plane was 16% complete and 75% of the airframe ready. On the other hand, if Andrei Tupolev and Vladimir Petlyakov could not complete the TV6, it will give the way to profit to their next masterclass, the TV7, better known as P8.